Tata Steel Masters 2024 came to a fittingly dramatic conclusion. I mean, it has been quite an extraordinary tournament. If you remember, five players shared the lead going into this final round. We have Vidit, Weiyi, Abdusatorov, Giri and Gukesh. All in with a shout. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the four games where all those five leading players were playing. So the first game I want to look at is Wei Yi against Vidit Gujarati. So Wei Yi has sort of snuck up on the outside with a couple of wins late in the tournament. So he was in with a shout. Very interesting opening choice. He played the Collar system. So this is named after Edgard Collar, Belgian player who was active in the 1920s and the early 1930s. He died tragically young at the age of 34 in 1932. But he really turned this seemingly modest opening into a really dangerous weapon. He played so many exciting attacking games. But it does seem, yeah, well, very modest. Um, but just look what happens. It turned out to be a very canny choice because where he managed to get a very interesting position out of the opening. So here, you know, black can play with b6, bishop b7. I mean, there's there's lots of choice. And you've got to get it just about right, actually. Basically, white has two ideas here. One is to throw the knight in on the outpost and go for a kind of classic attacking position, you know, with knight e5 and f4 or break open the center with e4. So Vidit played bishop d6 to guard the e5 square. Both players castled, and now rook e1. So it's just waiting for a moment. This is a very clever move. And yeah, it was a real uh, speciality of collars. He played quite a few games from exactly this position. Queen c7 from Vidit. Now it's quite clear that you know Vidit was consuming quite a bit of time. He wasn't completely familiar with this rather antiquated opening. e4. And already this is a little bit tricky for black actually. An exchange on d4, an exchange on e4. So white has a you know very classical position with the isolated queen's pawn, but actually. Black's pieces, I would say already, are a little bit misplaced. That queen on c7 is liable to be hit by a rook. And the rook is in a clever position on e1 because if black exchanges here, you recapture with the rook and swing it straight over into the attack. It's very dangerous. B6 played. Of course, this bishop needs to develop. Bishop G5. So preparing rook C1, hitting the queen, and also looking to damage black's kingside pawns. Knight takes E4, and again, rook takes E4, and already white has a really dangerous initiative. Bishop B7. Okay, first of all, before moving the rook, let's throw in rook c1, attacking the queen. The queen can't go back to d8, so it goes to b8. And now the rook swings across to attack on the king's side. Notice that queen is way on the other side of the board. Such... Uh, yeah, just there's a disconnect between the queen and, and the king side, you know, and this is a problem, basically. And, yeah, looking at my database, this is certainly not the first time this position has been seen. So, for example, a game between Pshupyorka and Prokash Budapest 1929, that was the, the heyday of the collar system, went g6 in this position, bishop b5. That's embarrassing for the knight. I just want to show you this game very quickly. And, well, white 
won this game very quickly, or well, you can see the attack on the king side is just deadly. So Vidit played instead f5. Well, it shuts out the bishop on this diagonal. However, this diagonal is uh, very inviting for the bishop when there's a pawn here, weak pawn here, and looks through to the king. So, well, if bishop d5, I and mean, that's the move you'd like to make to exchange off that dangerous bishop, but you, you can exchange rook c6. I mean, black can barely move in this position. Queen b3 is coming, and because that f pawn has advanced, it means the king is in a really dangerous position. Queen e8 played to defend the e pawn, queen b3. More pressure on e6. I mean, you know, white's moves are very classical, very natural. King h8. Black probably should exchange here and play queen g6 and try to survive this position. It's not a pleasant position. You know, this pawn is weak. But that's the best that black has. Um, King h8 played instead. Rook e1. Just targeting that pawn. Bishop e4. Okay, Vidit is trying to shut out the rook and you know, plant that knight, uh, plant the bishop in the middle of the board. But bishop takes queen g6. So this is vulnerable, but the bishop dropped back. And that makes room for the knight. Knight f6, knight g5, really dangerous. So, well, it's not the, the knight f7 is is not the problem because that'll be taken and g2 is is uh, on. Uh, but the idea is bishop f7. Now that is going to be a winning move. The queen is in massive trouble. So that's why f4 was played to give the queen a little little room. But now watch what happens. Rook takes pawn. Knight takes and knight takes bishop. So after that little flurry, we can see that there's a material balance of bishop and two pawns for a rook. So nominally it's a, a rough material balance, but I think we can see that actually white has a fantastic position. We've got another starfish bish. Beautiful piece. Looking in all directions. And that can be supported by the pawn on d5. And it just dominates these rooks. And white has a tremendous position. f3 played. Threatening mate. Mate prevented. g3. Bishop is hanging. Bishop b7. And d5 are just anchors that bishop in the middle of the board and it just means that you know when you when you have an extra rook you want to use that extra rook on an open file or you know but they they just can't work properly they can't come into play when that bishop is stationed on e6 rook d8 well not, nothing happening here but of course black needed to react uh, to the threat of d6 Right, so what now for white? Yeah, it all looks perfect. White's pieces look beautiful, but you've still got to make the final breakthrough. Queen a4, so that starts to just probe a bit in this direction. a5, queen c6, so Wei Yi has created a little weakness here and he's just finding his way into the position. Bishop b4, okay trying to exchange pieces. I mean, black can do very little here. Bishop takes, pawn takes. Now, I really like this next move. Instead of, you know, trying to take one of these pawns, where you make sure everything is secure before he starts collecting stuff. So this is a great move. At h4. G5 square is covered, so you don't need to worry about a knight coming to g5, but also now the king has a safe square on h2. So that means that you know you can, if necessary, move the rook from the from the back rank. It's just one of those moves which is really tidy, and you never know at some point, moat 
it might be possible to advance, but just a really tidy move. Rook a8. And now the knight comes in, knight e6. You never know. Could be looking to check here. That's a threat already because the rook hangs in the corner. Rook a7 prevents the check on f7. Queen takes b6. Okay, now it's time to collect. Rook takes a2. The queen goes back to c7 and knight f7 is once again a threat. Knight f6, check. And the knight bounces round to e5, so that's very awkward for black's queen. Doesn't really have a good square to go to. Queen h6, queen c2, check. Great move. Love the way this queen is just bouncing back and forth, finding a really good angle. Obviously, if the king retreats, then knight g6 is, is the end. And after g6, in any case... Knight g6, absolutely decisive. Queen takes, then bishop f5 wins the queen. Rook a8. Well, it's hopeless. A nice discovered check from the queen. And queen c7 check. That was the final move of the game. Of course, there's no defence. If the king goes to h8, then knight f7. Forks king and queen. And if the king goes to f8, then queen f7 is checkmate wow i mean what a tour de force from wei yi i mean that's basically a game straight out of the 1920s but with some classy 21st 21st century um, technique at the end of it you know this move for example h4 I think is very classy move. But yeah, so interesting. You know, if you if you look back in the databases, you'll find some fantastic games from Collar. Uh, for example, from this position, e5, e5 and e4. You know, this is speciality. Um, and and right the way through, you know, you'll you'll find some beautiful games there. So, although this looks like a very modest system, in fact, there is real venom. Black isn't careful, and Vidit was really wrong-footed by this opening choice. So Wei Yi was the first into the clubhouse. Could any of the others score a win to catch him? Well, I'm going to show you three more videos, and I'll show you what happens.